Haskins class, Chris Haskins here with the realestateroundup.com bringing you another flip tip. Our mission statement is to uplift the financial literacy of my fellow mankind through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Today I've got a wonderful guest for you, Gary Bodie. Hey Chris. How you doing my brother? Good. Gary is a full-time real estate investor and I'm going to ask him some questions today and our topic today is should you get a business license as a real estate investor do you need a business license as a real estate investor i hope my goal is to get gary back on our show because he is a veteran he's been doing this since i don't know what i let him tell you since forever since when 2003 full part time part time with part 2008 full time but before that, you still got some history too, Gary, don't you? Oh, yeah. My family, my mom and pop, my mom and dad were mom and pop landlords. All right. So I grew up in it. Gary grew up in real estate, which a lot of people didn't. I didn't. My dad owned one house my whole, our whole lives. So Gary's going to share with us a story and whether it was some facts about a case that he had to go through with the city regarding having a business license and whether you should get one or not. So Gary has some very important information to share with you today. Both of us went through the same problem with the city that we live in. So real quick, I'm going to give you a background of Gary and let's cover exactly whether or not or you can determine whether or not you need a business license for your real estate investing business. Gary. Yes. Give us your background, brother. Tell us where you are and all that stuff. We're in Hampton, Virginia, and uh, that's where I do all my investing is, is pretty much in Hampton. Cool. And like I mentioned, my mom and dad were real estate investors and uh, pretty much here in Hampton, Newport News. Um, but then, you know, for, for 20, <coughs> 30 years, I had a day job uh, outside of real estate. Really? And um, then uh, I always knew I wanted to um, do some real estate on the side. So in 2003, we started doing it part-time, my okay. wife and I. But before, you had to be doing stuff with your parents. I was, you know, I mean, I, when I was a kid in high school, I was cutting grass and, uh, you know, Learning. scraping paint and oh, my paint goodness. and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And then, you know... Um, I did a little bit with my parents, but I lived in you know different cities at times, okay. and um, and then later on, you know, uh, I was advising them a bit mm -hmm. um, as they were transitioning. Yeah. And uh, at one point, I thought I was going to move to Hampton and buy their business, mm -hmm. and that didn't happen. I did move to Hampton, moved back to Hampton, but I didn't end up buying their business. But in fact, uh, I ended up they they sold it all, uh, and wow. I ended up um, with the. Unfortunately, the family they sold it to ended up in foreclosure, and I started yes. out buying some properties in foreclosure. That my From parents, them people? Well, it's on the courthouse. Yeah. They got a bank loan, and uh, so now the bank owns it, or it was before that, it was on the courthouse. Yeah. And I bought some properties, and then I just you know started buying other properties. So, wow, interesting story. And in 2008, I you know. <clears throat> Uh, the irony is, you know, 2008 is when Lehman Brothers crashed. Mm -hmm. Well, I had, I had announced in my job, in my career, you know, six months, nine months, a year in advance that I was going to leave in August of 2008. And uh, they hired So the real estate's going like this. Yeah, they hired my replacement. You know, I've already proven myself over the past five years that I can flip houses, I can make money. I've got a couple rentals, you know, I've got a few rentals already. And I'm ready to go. But I'm fully committed. You know, and then here comes August, September 2008, and, you know, Lehman Brothers goes down. It looks like the world financial crisis could be the Great Decession, Recession, you know, maybe a depression. And I'm thinking to myself, OMG. I just quit my day job. Oh, my Lord. And I know I that's can't, stressful. You know, I can't get it back. So it was, you know, there's a little bit of sink or swim there. <laughs> so you, well, you know what's weird? When you look back, do you consider, I mean, obviously... When you think when you think about being a businessman, that's when you want to kind of. It absolutely is. You know, some of the properties I bought for between two thousand and three and two thousand and eight. In retrospect, I paid too much for. Overpriced. You know, because they were the market was going up so much. But you know, I bought. I've always been a value investor, so I bought them at a discount. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but then you know, so now it's two thousand and eight, and prices are going to you know foreclosures are rising, and nobody's buying anything. Yeah. And my, my most successful years were, you know, 2008, 2013, mm -hmm. you know, when blood was in the streets and, you know, the banks were begging you to buy houses, <coughs> yeah. very little competition. It was um, very little competition. And so, you know, 
uh, and there's still some buyers out there. Yep. I like to tell the story that, you know, when we would buy a house, really, really good price, we'd fix it up nicer than the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, best really one. glam it up, but do a quality job, and we'd put it on the market, um, and we can talk about that sometime, but we put it on the market, it's a flat fee listing, and we'd get three showings in the first two weeks, Yeah. and one of those buyers would buy it. Yeah. I mean, our market time was one or two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. And we only had three showings. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, but so the, the serious buyers were out there. They'd see the pictures online. They'd come and see our house. Say, "This is the one we want." So, have you noticed we're going we're gonna to get to our training for the business license and stuff? I could talk to Gary all day. The guy has a wealth of knowledge. Have you noticed? I remember my friends that got out of the business early two thousand and got back in, say after the crash. Renovations changed. Did you see your renovation style, or like the stuff you had to do to them, put in them change over time? <clears throat> uh, not so much. I mean, we were always doing, you know, steel granite. steel appliances, granite oh, really? counters. You okay. Know, we, we were doing that all along, trying to, you know, just, you know, and we're doing them in starter homes, you know, mm -hmm. 1,000, 1,200 square foot homes. You're not expecting to see this kitchen when you walk mm -hmm. in. You're not expecting to see this bathroom. Yeah. And, you know, we were doing that, and that's why people walked in. Gotcha. And so, so you were already doing that? We were already doing that. Wow, okay. I didn't start doing that, Gary, until about 2000. 13, man. We were doing Formica, laminate floor. But we were still selling them too. I mean, obviously they weren't going as quick as yours, though. So your rehab, you were, you've been doing nice stuff basically since the beginning of your... Yeah. Hmm. Nice. All right, so you've been doing it forever. Let's talk about <clears throat> the backstory uh, before we get to yeah. the business license. Tell me what... What brings us here and why your store is important? Yeah, so as I mentioned, I was flipping some houses. I would occasionally buy a wholesale. I would occasionally sell a wholesale that if I had too many properties. And I also had long-term rentals that I acquired in those years that we were part-time. And, you know, my long-term goal was uh, to acquire buy-and-hold properties mm -hmm. uh, and build equity. And the, the flipping was, you know, cash flow to help make that happen. And, yes. uh, and uh, you got to pay the bills at home too. Yeah. So I get a letter from the city, and they say that uh, they've looked at my income tax returns, and I need to pay back taxes, not not income taxes, but I need to pay these business uh, license taxes. Business license taxes. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> you know, I didn't actually. I, I asked a buddy lawyer of mine. I didn't ask. I didn't get a real legal opinion, but because I'm a landlord, I, I tend to be cheap. I didn't want to pay a lawyer, so I asked a buddy, and he's like, "No, no, no. That's a lawyer. You know, I'm not going to name him here because he'd be embarrassing." <laughs> but no, no, no. You don't need a you don't need a license to do that. A business license to flip houses. Was and, he? Is he around here? Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, and so there's a, again, being cheap, you can appeal yourself at the first level without going to court or without hiring a lawyer. And, you know, I had the time, so I, I appealed this ruling. But what did they say when they first contacted you? You know, I, I don't remember really clear. It's like, uh, you know, you owe these, we've looked at your... Well, basically, they can't tell you. You have to, I mean, have to, they have to ask you, are you correct? I mean, was what you filed correct, right? I mean, they... Well, let's back up a little bit. <clears throat> um, so uh, I was filing income tax returns, you know, state and federal income tax returns. Yes. And the, in Virginia, the municipalities, Hampton City or any city or any county, can look at your income tax returns. You hear that, guys? They okay. can scrape them, pull them. They can pull them, they can scrape them. And, you know, I didn't have an LLC. I didn't have any corporation. I was doing everything in my own name. Uh, so I'm not trying to hide anything. It's, you know, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, I'm, and I'm listing myself as a real estate you know, rehab or flipper. Um, and, so uh, at that time, you did have a license? I didn't have a you license. You did not have a license. And let's okay. also distinguish, we're not talking about real estate license, like an agent oh, yeah, runs that's around. that's right. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yes. We're talking about a business license. Yes. Like you're going to open a restaurant. You know, mm -hmm. you need a business license. Or any store. Or a <clears throat> store, anything. Pretty much <coughs> business, you know. I was completely unaware that I needed a business license to, to, to sell, I mean, to, to flip houses. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, and you don't need one to be a landlord. We'll get back to that, get to that yeah. you know. 
Um, so I was flipping houses, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately filling out my tax return. I'm not trying to hide the income. I'm not trying to cheat anybody. Wholesaling, buying, fixing up, yeah. retailing. And I'm retailing them, and I'm putting that on, what would it be? Uh, Schedule. That's E. C, e is on rental. Isn't it? E's rental. So I'm putting C. you know my my rental income on one schedule, and I'm putting my yeah, you flip in, good, you know, okay. my flip income over here. So it's it's all there in black and white. Got gotcha. you. And I'm paying on the flips. I'm paying income taxes, and I'm paying withholdings. Mm -hmm. You know, withhold Medicare, Social Security taxes. Wow. So you know you're being a good guy. I'm I'm paying the bills. I think and the city says you owe this other tax. I'm like. What other tax? Third tax. Yeah, well, there's many, God. Wait a minute, Chris. There's a lot more taxes than right. that. You're, you're right. flipping houses. You're also paying transfer taxes on the I when you about buy that. it. Hidden. You're, you're paying transfer taxes <clears throat> and documentary taxes and stamps. Those are all taxes. Sales tax on the stuff we buy at those. And you're paying, you're right. You're paying sales tax on all the materials you buy. Good God. So, you know, uh, but whatever. I was thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about this tax. And this uh, is the city tax, business license tax. It's a, it's a locality tax. So it could be in, in Virginia, of course, our, our cities and counties are separate. Yeah. And so it could be a county could tax you on this or the city could tax you on this. And it's a locality tax. Local tax. Yes. Nothing to do with IRS state taxes. Nothing to do with that. Um, indirectly. Indirectly. The state. In that the state writes the laws. Gotcha. That require what they're called. Uh, we call them business, professional, and occupational licenses. But you already paid the state, though, Gary. I paid the state income tax. So I'm saying this is an addition to that. This is an addition to that. For my viewers, I want to make sure that they understand that you had already paid federal and state. I paid income taxes. I paid transfer taxes. I gotcha. paid sales taxes. All right. I didn't know about this one. All right. So I asked my lawyer buddy, and he said, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. So then I started peeling it on my own, you know. And so I provide evidence to the um, to the city, and they're yeah they're they're nice they're friendly and uh, and then they finally provide me with uh, with this ruling. Okay. And you can share that you know with your um, it's an, it's it's the ruling of the tax commissioner of the state of Virginia and it's yep. ruling number ninety nine dash thirteen. So they can Google that Virginia tax code. 99-13 guys I'll put that on the, on the screen too yeah. <clears throat> and it's a case from 1999 and it's pretty when you actually read it it's kind of cut and dried mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was, as when they finally sent this to me I'm saying well why didn't you just send me that the first time mm -hmm. you know because I read it carefully and it's it's actually pretty black and white I did need a license you do uh, need a license you do need a license <clears throat> to build houses wow and uh, it's, it's kind of like a contractor's license, and you're taxed at the same rate. Good. Um, and uh, so let's get to, you know, the good news, the bad news is uh, the business license, I think, I just remember, I think it's like cost you 50 bucks a year to get the, the actual business license. Yes. Um, and then you also, on top of the license fee, uh, or that's the minimum, you also owe this um, tax, which is 16 cents per hundred. Per hundred dollars per hundred dollars of, income. of gross receipts. Gross receipts. That's right. We'll hundred dollars of gross receipts. Yeah. Okay. That. And uh, so that's not sixteen percent. That's sixteen cents per hundred. Let's just let's just pull it down. Let's say you flip a house. Let's say you buy a house for fifty. Fifty. You spend twenty five, and you sell it for a hundred. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you owe the tax on the gross receipts a hundred thousand. The price you sold it for, and the tax works out to be. $160 per 100, yeah, 100,000 for 100,000, 16 gotcha. cents per hundred, and that's a hundred, you know, so $160. So, which, you know, okay, that's not the, you know, end of the world, end of the world. We can pay this tax, we can be legit. <clears throat> and, um, and so, uh, it turned out I'd been doing this. Um, they actually wrote to me about, uh, what was it, 2008 2014. So, which is probably about as far back as they could go. Hold on, say that again, Gary? They uh, wrote to me about tax years 2008, 2014. So, so back taxes. Okay, so they want to look at you from 8 to 14. Yes. Wow, okay. Seven uh, years. All right, I didn't know that. Um, and <coughs> so, uh, they already had all my tax returns, but. You they know, got it already. They, they got it. And uh, so I owed five thousand dollars, just under five thousand dollars. Okay. And that's three million dollars worth of flips. 
And I'm like, wow, I flipped three million dollars yeah. worth of houses. And then, you know, then I thought about it, you know, but you know, if you sell a house for 150 four times a year, which is, you know, maybe roughly what I was doing, flipping a house every quarter, yeah, particularly when I was busy. The standard. You know, that's six hundred thousand dollars a year in gross receipts, not profit. Now what are, let's go over the what are the gross receipts Gary? Yeah, gross receipts, I mean in a simple um, so the second part I contested is well, I just owe this on my profit, right? Your gross profit, because we're still yeah. in, in our eyes, the gross profit and net profit. Yeah, but no, you owe the tax on gross receipts. Now, what so is that? in gross receipts, the short answer is it's what you sold the house for. It's, mm -hmm. your, you know, it's your final retail price. Gotcha. Okay. What you sold the house for. What you sold the house for. Not what you made. Not how much you made. It had nothing to do with how much you made. And so, like I said, you know, over five years, I had, uh, this was like six or seven years, I'd done $3 million worth, I had $5,000 worth of taxes. And I'll give the city credit, you know, they gave me a payment plan for, you know, to, to catch up on it. And I wow, caught man. up on it. And, uh, and I kept a business license because I still had projects ongoing. Mm -hmm. And I kept it for a couple more years. And then uh, <clears throat> I wrote the city a letter and said, well, I'm no longer, you know, flipping houses. I'm a full-time landlord now. And I, I gave up my license. I don't have one today. Okay. Uh, and we'll, you know, we can get to that too. Yeah, we'll get to that other part of the, the fence. But you know, the, the hard part about this tax is, if you've been in this business long enough, you've had a house flip that went a little bad, and oh, you, yeah. you know, that you either worked for three or four months and made zero dollars, or, and it happens, you may, you work half a year and you lose money when you finally sell the house. It does happen. You, it does happen. It happens to experience, you know. Uh, there's unexpected, things you discover after you buy the house, yep. or your comps were wrong, or the market changes a little bit, uh, it can happen. You know, like gamblers, they like to talk about their home runs. The I like to talk about my wins, too. But I've had my losses, and well, you owe this tax when you lose money. No, they don't care about your profit? I mean... Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with the profit you made. Okay, so if you have negative profit, if you lose money, you still owe this tax. Unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the good news, like I said, 160 bucks on a hundred thousand dollar house, hundred fifty thousand dollar house, that's what, two forty. Yeah. You know, so my typical ceiling price with my flips is around hundred and fifty. Yeah. Two hundred and forty dollars. Yeah, but that's just you though, Gary. I mean some guys are dealing with three, four, five hundred thousand dollar houses. Yeah. And imagine, you know, you flip a million dollar house. Yeah, you got eleven hundred and uh, you know, and then and you don't make any money. Well, Oh, wow. Uh, only, yeah. wow. I mean, there are people doing the high-end houses. I, I, I can't afford that risk. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> me neither. So basically, you're telling me it doesn't matter what you make. doesn't matter. They are charging us here in Hampton. We don't know what every municipality is going to charge. But we're going to pay them whether we make a penny or yes. even lose money. Wow, okay. And the fact that they know because they can pull our tax returns and find out whether we sell it if we... So what were you doing? Did you want to share that with us? What were you doing for them before to have you to owe that? I mean, is it something that you weren't clear about? I just didn't know I needed a license. Yeah, there's not, you know, you're doing this training and there's not really uh, a good school for, you know, flipping houses. No. I mean, there's these gurus, you know, but they're kind of national. And some of them are quite good, but they don't know the laws in Virginia. Yeah, every city you know, too. Every state, every, you know, locality is a little bit different. This is essentially a state program that, that creates the opportunity yeah, for local down. tax. Mm -hmm. um, Windfall almost. Well, I don't know about that. You know, it, Virginia has a Dillon rule and the, and the localities are pretty restricted on where they can tax people. Okay. And uh, we didn't even mention property taxes when we were going through the litany. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, in Virginia, the, the localities are highly dependent on property taxes to fund schools. Yeah, they have for yeah. good schools. Yep. It helps you flip houses if you got good schools, and I, I right. totally support the money gets spent on schools. That's and there's right. other, you know, there's other worthwhile things that the city does. Uh, we got to pay for it somehow. You're right, so, Gary. All right. Uh, yeah. So, you before that, I mean, I'm presuming you weren't even you would you didn't have any business taxes going to the city. I didn't. I you know, like I said, I paid income taxes, I paid property taxes, I paid sales taxes. Gotcha. Uh, I didn't have a business license for any activity, and didn't know I needed one. So they wanted to know what what did they, they want to know where their money is for these years, basically. Yeah. What, what do they want to know? I mean, they, they ask you. 
You know, and so once you get a business license, you know, which I did, okay, um, then they, you have to file an annual statement with them, yeah. uh, separate from your tax returns, and you have to declare your gross receipts, and um, and then you calculate your tax and send write them a check. Write them a check. And you do that every year, and so. Wow, we have been writing checks, haven't we, Gary? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So before, um, I want to paint the picture before and after. Mm -hmm. Before, you didn't have a business license, so the city wasn't get, I guess, their fair share from a business. I guess, would you be considered a business owner at that time? Yes. And, you know, that's kind of the, you know, real estate's a little fuzzy because, yeah. and I think that's where we're going here, is that <clears throat> real estate, for some people, is an investment, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you don't have to have a business license to... Um, buy and sell stocks. That's right. You know, I mean, if you're a broker, I'm sure you do, okay? But if I'm a day trader on hmm. my own account, well, I could be wrong about this too, I was wrong about that, but if I'm a day trader in stocks... I don't uh, know anybody that has a business license to buy and sell stocks. I don't think you need one, okay? I didn't think I needed this either. Hey, can I tell your viewer something? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm not an attorney. That's right, yeah, disclaimer. <laughs> I'm not an attorney. Informational. I'm not a, I'm not a CPA. Um, informational purposes only. Yeah, this is for informational purposes. I could be wrong about everything. There so you go. Get your, get your good advice, do your due diligence. Smart. All right. But, I mean, people that, obviously, people buy and sell stocks over the Internet every day. Yeah. Now, you know, let's say you buy and sell cars or you buy and sell furniture. Yeah. You know? You know, probably pretty clearly, you know, you do need a license. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, some kind of backyard guy doing one car a year for a yeah. profit, you know, um, and you don't report it, that income, maybe you get away with it. But, you know, we're not here today to talk about how to get away with that. Yeah. You know, we're not here to talk about tax fraud. Mm -mm. We're talking about being a legitimate businessman. There you go. Doing the right thing, paying what you owe. And I'm, I'm not going to pay any taxes I don't owe. And, it's know, an obligation to not do that. Yeah, not um, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna pay the taxes I do owe. Good for you, good Gary. I think we were talking about being ignorant of. What did you say? I was just ignorant. I didn't know at the time that I needed the license. Yeah. Okay, let's move along here. We got the backstory. Hampton came after you, and I think I shared with you too. They came after me for our our viewers. They came after me for two years. I had a business license. I've had my business license since 2006. And immediately, I knew I'd heard about. I think you might have called me when you when you got your letter. I remember you calling we did talk me, about it. asking. He asked you asked me did I have a license, and I said I did. And a year went by or two. I hadn't heard from the city. Then I got that same letter. They wanted to know I was actually not reporting my gross receipts. You know, gross receipts. I thought gross being a businessman was the gross profit. So there's a big difference between me selling a house for, let's just leave it easy at 100,000, right? I may only make, I've had houses where I had to bring $2,500 to closing to get out of it. So in my mind, my gross profit was negative $2,500. You know, so I carried that on. And the IRS actually counts it that way too. Yeah. The IRS and the state will say, listen, if you lost 25, if you had to spend money to sell an asset, then we're going to give you a break. We won't tax you on that because you lost money. But that's not how the city works. They want, and I even told them. I told them I lost money on this house, and they didn't care. They wanted their hundred, I don't know, two hundred and fifty bucks, whatever I sold it for. I had to write them a check for the house that I lost money on. So that is how it works. Okay, so we have determined that you need a business license for flipping and flipping. Let's talk. Let's distinguish the the, the difference, Gary. You know, in, in my uh, business, I was buying properties in my name and then selling them. I don't, I don't have an LLC or a corporation, uh, but I don't think that matters. I think you, you need the same business license no matter what your entity is. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm, I'm buying, fixing them up, reselling. That's flipping. Okay. It doesn't matter that you did. I mean, you could have had a business license with the city and done the same thing. You could, well, obviously, when now that you have a business license, if you do that, or do you put them in your, when you say you did it in your name, you don't title it. We're not talking about titling here. I am talking about titling. So you title it too. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I'm curious about that. I'm going to sidebar that. Why don't you put them in your name? You don't, you don't. 
you know, I started small and it doesn't seem to matter, and then you get bigger and bigger and, you, and you're busy and you never, it's something I need to do. Maybe you'll do some training for me on what entity I should. Okay. So you say you should do that. I should do that. Got you. I got, for my viewers, I, you're, <laughs> I consider you a veteran, brother, so I want, I'm sure my viewers would like to know too. Well, you know, some things, Gary, we know we should do. I don't know what it is, dude. I mean, I consider an expert too. I'm like, I need to do that. You get busy. You get busy and, you know, you do the, you, the things you need to do today. And it's the things that can wait sometimes have to sometimes wait. It's 5 o'clock and it's not done already. <laughs> okay, so we've got this line here. We've got, we're trying to distinguish whether you need a license for flipping or, and or being a landlord owning the property. So, you know, in this ruling from the tax commissioner, pretty clearly if you're owning and managing your own rental properties, um, you can make repairs on them without having a contractor's, um, well, I'm not, um, you can work on your properties and you don't owe, you don't have to have a business license to yes. collect rents. To collect rents. You know, what I learned when I read this though, is if you have a hotel, you have to have a business license. If you have a rooming house, which is kind of like a rental, where you rent out a house by the rooms, mm -hmm. you actually need a business license to run that rooming house. Got gotcha. you. You know, and there's some other, I think maybe even a, a trailer park, you need a business license. Mm -hmm. But owning single family houses, you know, apartments, um, you don't need a business license. And there doesn't, to me, seem to be any limit on the number. Yeah. And in fact, even when the city caught up with me, I had already peaked, you know, in my max number of flips per year. And I was kind of on the, the downslope and I'd been, all this time I'd been building up my, my rentals. Mm -hmm. And like I said, 2008, I went, uh, quit my day job. And by 2013, 2014, I was slowing down on the flips and trying to make it go on just, just the rentals. Cool. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, now I, I, that's what I do. I'm a landlord. Gotcha. And I don't need a business license, don't have a business license. Um, so you're in the city knocking at your and door. And you know, the city, when I didn't renew my, city, my business license one year, the city uh, wrote me and said, where's your business license? And I wrote him back and said, well, I've discontinued that activity. Mm -hmm. I'm flipping houses, I'm, I'm a landlord, and uh, I don't need a business license anymore. And they didn't contest that. Wow. So. Nice. Uh, they want to know where their money is. <laughs> where my money is, if you live. So I don't have a business license. So the city says, and they told me the same thing. It, basically, just explain it for a two-year-old, Gary, so we understand. Owning real estate, managing your own rental property. Yeah, you're buying hold, um, and you own it yourself. You're not talking. We're not talking about. You need a real estate agent's license to manage property for somebody else for there a you fee. Go. Yeah, okay. for someone else. Yes. And you would actually also need a business license. Mm -hmm. And the tax rate would be different than this contractor's tax rate, my understanding. Good gracious. Okay. Um, but you own the rentals and you manage your own. Your own stuff. Your own stuff. And to me, it doesn't seem to matter whether you have one or a hundred. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it's yours. As long as it's yours, then you um, don't need a business license to do that. Yep. And of course, you know, they're still looking at your tax return. Want to okay. verify? Yeah, and my tax return shows rental income. It's going to be uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and you. so I'm still declaring all. My, you know, I'm not cheating here. Good for you, Gary. They look at it every year, I'm sure. And I'm sure they do. I'm, um, you know, but the great thing about rental income is you don't pay payroll taxes on that either. And of course, you know, as I'm sure you've done some training, That's you get the depreciation on the property, so you get some tax shelter. Yep. So your income taxes are lower. And so, you know, there's some, there's some real positives in real estate. That's uh, right. That's and there's real money to be made in flipping houses. I just, you know, reached the point where I didn't want to do that anymore. Try something different. Why didn't you want to do that? What made you change into being more of a passive asset owner as opposed to an active asset owner, if you will. You know, I had some health issues in 2013. Okay. And, um, you know, you just have, you get a little different perspective, perspective on, on life. Right? On life, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of like, 
is that what I want to do? Or yeah. again, do I want to do something else? Um, it's a rough business, man. And, um, you know, we still are very actively managing our properties and we're slowly growing our rentals. Okay. Um, but, you know, even then, you know, we, we're now acquired maybe a house a year. Okay. You know. That's cool. Um, and let's talk, though, about, uh, let's talk about selling your rentals for a minute. Okay, selling your rentals. This is after you have owned them for over a year, no doubt. Yes. Uh -huh. I've only sold, you know, <coughs> um, two or three, I don't know, over the years. So it's not like I'm doing it every year. But you could adopt a strategy of, uh, let's say you had 10 rentals. You know, and that's, that's, let's say you're going to hold it for 10 years. Let's, let's make it so it's, it's very hard to contest. Five or 10 years, you're going to hold this property. So you buy a house and you fix it up enough for it to be a solid, safe rental. You know, but you're not putting in stainless appliances and granite countertops. Yeah. Okay. And you rent it out on the market for a fair price for five years. And then, you know, after five, seven, ten years, you, um, tenant moves out and you decide, okay, I'm going to sell this property. Okay. And maybe you come in and now you do the granite counters and the stainless appliances, paint job, carpet. You fix know, it up for retail. Fix it up for retail. Get your top dollar. Okay. Okay. I don't believe I need a business license to do that. Okay, mm -hmm. because it's a rental that I've held long term. I'm not flipping that house. Yeah. Okay, and and on my tax return, I'm going to put that on long term capital gains. Yeah. Okay, and you know the the tax rate on long term capital gains is more favorable than even ordinary income. Yep. And and again, you don't have to pay the payroll taxes. Uh, so you could still. So that's one way to legitimately, legally avoid this actually quite small tax. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't adopt this strategy just to avoid 150 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Right. And the $50 license. Well, maybe okay. it's the way that they're going to look at it. They're going to view um, it. You know, so, but you, you know, um, you can do that. And I, in my view, uh, now if I, if I held a house one year and flipped it and I did that every year with multiple houses. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the you know, some the city or somebody would contest that uh, as, and yeah, maybe even the business. feds would, you know, the IRS would contest it as long term if I'm, yeah. you know, over and over and over again. But if I'm, you know, I mean, obviously you're going to sell someday. Yep. And so I think, um, I think that's, you know, completely legitimate to hold it for a while, yeah. sell it, pay long term capital gains tax. So on that seventh year, you went in there, you fixed it up. That would still be considered long term. I mean, that's gonna, that's still not gonna be a business where you're buying. Yeah, it's long term. I mean, I don't think anyone could deny that though, Gary, because you. I mean, you turned it into a sale after you had the passive yeah. income. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're. I think you know. I think you're fine on that. Yeah, um, I would agree. I would agree. So do you? So you're done with flipping. Well, not honestly done, but you don't. I could go get a business license tomorrow, fill out the forms, pay the fifty bucks, gotcha, and and start over again. And you know, in our business, even though I'm not actively looking, occasionally those good deals fall in your lap. Yeah. You know, somebody calls you, a friend of a friend. You know, they know you're in real estate, and yeah. and um, you know, maybe I want to wholesale some deal. Maybe something falls in my lap, and I want gotcha. to wholesale it. Gotcha. Uh, I let's talk about wholesaling. Yeah. Uh, because I, you need this license for, I believe, for wholesaling. Just yeah, it's income. Do. It's business income. It's, it's business income. The dad don't work. Um, so, if you're wholesaling houses, let's say you're doing that exclusively, you know, and I don't care what you, what entity you use, whether you're doing your name, whether you're, and let's say you're reporting on the income, on your tax returns, um, you need a business license. Yep. And you need to pay this tax. Mm -hmm. What I don't know is what <clears throat> gross receipts means for a wholesaler. Gross receipts for a wholesaler and uh, for our viewers that are kind of new to wholesaling. If you want to break it down real quick, uh, what what an actual wholesale would look like? You know, so I you know I wholesale the house to you one day. Yeah. Uh, I buy some wholesales and I sell some wholesales. But the one I bought a house on a courthouse steps. So in the courthouse steps, I, I was a high bidder. I put down a deposit that day and I signed a contract to to pay off this house in 15 days, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's a good deal. And I, I think you were standing next to me at the courthouse auction. Um, maybe not. Prepared. We didn't bid. Well, we did. I didn't want to bid. Well, I don't know if I was prepared. Or I didn't want to go go. Let's back say and you weren't prepared because if you say you were, you, you didn't want to go back and forth. That's collusion, and we're, oh, we're you're a right. different kind of legal jeopardy there. Okay. There was other bidders present. I there bid were against. other bidders present. Okay. Oh. 
So it was, a, it was a fair right. and uh, fair and open fair auction. Fair that's right. And uh, I won. Okay, and, and you weren't. Uh, let's say you didn't have a deposit that day. I did. You know. I didn't actually. And uh, and so I turned around and you know shook hands with you and you know sold it for five thousand dollars more. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we did the paperwork for that contract I'd gotten that day. I signed that. And you came up, you know, you had the funds within um, the time, yeah, yeah. and we closed it. So and you didn't actually, for our viewers to understand the wholesaling, you didn't actually buy that house. I'm pretty sure I didn't in that case. You know, I've also wholesaled, so, you know, I was, I was buying the house on the, on the courthouse steps frequently. It's one of my main means of acquiring properties. Mm -hmm. One of the most risky places, but one of the most profitable. You better know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I did, you know, actually close them in my name and then wholesale them afterwards. Gotcha. Okay. Um, we can talk about both. Let's do the one. Yeah. Clearly the one where I close in my name and then resell. sell it and resell it. That's when we gross sale. It's going to be gross sale. Yeah, that's the same, you know, that's just a flip that I own. Now let's say that uh, the, the, the one we're talking about where I just assign the contract to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the ruling is going to be that it's the gross price, my, my max bid. Your max bid. So we don't know that yet. We, I don't know that's that for a fact, but I, I think that's what it is. Not the profit I made from selling it to wow. you. So we Actually, to... it wouldn't even be my max bid. It would be the price I sold it to you. That's right. Because um, you wrote for the sales. So it would be the, you know, the, the, my max bid plus the, my uh, assignment fee. So Gary has a house under contract for 50 sells it for 55 would or would you have to pay gross receipts on the 55 because you're only making five thousand we don't that's what that's what we're talking about right yeah. now and like i said i'm not an attorney not an accountant but I, I think you know 50 i think you're gonna pay the tax on 55 and again yeah. we said the tax on 100 was uh 160 160 so now we're talking 80, 80 bucks, bucks yeah. you know versus eight bucks might be yeah. um you know you don't want to be giving away 70 bucks, but I, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, you have to make that, you have to find, do your research on that, guys. Yeah. And I don't even know there's a case. Basically, this stuff is determined by cases from the past. So. Yes. And, you know, another question your, your, your uh, viewers might have is, well, what if I live in Hampton and I flip houses in Newport News or Norfolk, another city? Yeah. You know? Which is common. Which is common. I, I tend to just do. <coughs> um, my rentals are in a... You're unique, though, Gary. I, I am. i got my own little farm method, you know, and I have a circle in Hampton. So you stay in Hampton? I, stay, I have one house in Newport, in York County that was a mistake. I bet you didn't even want to drive out there. I don't want to drive out there. I knew it. Uh, you, know. you get lazy. Well, not you, but one gets lazier the older the more you get in the business. You don't want to... What for me, I didn't want to keep driving all around. I don't want to drive around. I don't like traffic. And I was, in my other career, I was working in a home office... And I didn't have time to go to the courthouses all over town to buy yeah. the courthouse steps. Didn't have time to even drive out and look at when I was doing. I was doing it part time, mm. so I, you know, I decided I'd just do Hampton. And wow. I, I live. I get to the courthouse in six or seven minutes from my house. Got gotcha. And um, pretty smooth. Yeah, and I can get to pretty much every one of my rentals in six or seven minutes. Other nice. Than, nice. Other than the one in York County. Oh yeah. Well, go ahead. You're saying about the wholesalers and other cities. Oh yeah, thanks. I forgot what I was talking. Get you back on track. <laughs> you know, you owe, that, you owe that tax, and there's another ruling on that that I read, but I can't remember the answer to the question. Okay. The, the question, the, the question is, do I have to have a license, a business license, in every every the city under business, yeah. every locality? Do I have to pay that tax separately, or do I have one business license in Hampton and pay taxes on a flip in Newport News to Hampton? Good gracious, uh, man. I don't know the answer to that, but that's so actually a very easy answer because it's like any other contractor. Let's say I'm a plumbing contractor and I do business in, you know, in Hampton. I live in Hampton. My, my business address is in Hampton, but I do plumbing in York County and yeah, Coast. Yeah, it would be all around. You know, all around. It's the same answer as it would be for a plumber. I just don't know what that answer is. Yes. Uh, I yes. suspect you just pay the tax in Hampton Man. where you live. Now, oh, I do another part of it. If I'm a plumber and I have multiple offices, offices. If I have a, a Hampton office, but I also have a, a Norfolk office, then I got to have a business license over there. I think gotcha. that's where you can, where you have your office and where you live. Gotcha. Okay. 
Well, make sure you do your research on that. So Gary, you're breaking it down for us. So we, now we understand wholesaling is going to be, would you call it an active? Income? Oh, absolutely. Wholesaling is active. Yeah. And you're going to, you're going to need it to license. You're going to pay this tax and you're going to pay income taxes, state and federal, and you're going to pay uh, withholdings. Uh, oh my Lord. Yeah. So wholesaling, flipping. Wholesaling is going to be under the same leg yeah. of income of flipping, right? Yeah, Rent, yeah. Buy, renovate. And landlording is going to be on the passive. What is, I'm going to quote passive, Gary, because I my I own a bunch of rental property and it's not passive at all. You know? I'm with you. I, you know, we're very, my wife and I, we're like out there, you know, um, but, you know, it's doing, considered. doing some of the maintenance, but it's considered passive. Yeah, but, you know. But we're actively involved in the management and the maintenance, yes. and you know, we sh we show them ourselves. We mm -hmm. sign contracts, leases. Uh, cool. Occasionally, we have to knock on the door and you know. Yeah, do what you got to do. Ask ask for some rent. Occasionally, we got to go to the courthouse and uh, start some proceedings. But uh, but yeah, uh, you know, state and federal income taxes treat that differently than wage income. Okay, that's you know kind of the easier way to understand. If you make money as a, at a job, you get wages or salary. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you have a business and you have business income, that's very similar to having a job, getting wages uh, or salary. Yes. So, you know, that's why where those are similar. You're just self-employed. Yep. Well, being a landlord is in a different category. It's an investment. Yeah. And you're, it's income from an investment. Gotcha. Um, and you don't pay the income. In, well, you do pay income, income taxes, but on a different schedule. Different. Um, yeah, you tax differently yeah. than active. For my viewers that think that owning rental property is passive income, I just, I don't want you to think that. You know, coming from an expert here, two experts. I don't know, Gary, when I was getting into the business in 04, I thought I was just going to have some rental property and I would just not even have to go there and I would just get a check in the mail every month and that was it. Well, you're old school. I don't get checks in the mail. I get a direct deposit in my bank account. You know? I mean, <laughs> I know what you mean. Checks yeah. in the mail, it's like it'd be easy. Um, <laughs> and uh, and you can do that. I mean, you can hire a management company. Yeah. You know, and pay. You know, but it takes a huge chunk out of your income. Not you know? only that. I mean, that, do you know any good management companies, brother Gary? You know, I I, I know a couple. Oh um, my lord! Um, an expert not that only knows I a couple. Actually, use them. Yeah. You know. Um, that, um, you know, I still, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a question of how you're going to scale your business. Really. Yeah, scale of it. You can't do everything. Okay. It's impossible. Yeah. Uh, if you're, if you're, if you do everything yourself, it limits how big you can get. For yeah. sure. But bigger is not always better though. Well, that's what I decided a few years ago. That I was big enough, you know, and between my wife and I, you know, it's not like a full-time job. We spend a few hours a day. Yep. Um. Some weeks it's really busy. Some weeks we don't do our right. anything. Yeah. Good for you, Gary. Good for you. So um, if without divulging or disclosing all of your stuff, let's say for a ballpark, what is your perception of being comfortable regarding the amount of rentals that you think that you say, you know what, I think this is okay. I don't need, I don't want to get that much more bigger than this. Yeah. Um, you know, We've sold, we sold one of our multifamilies this year. We have a mix of single family houses, a couple condos, a couple townhouses, and a couple multi, small multifamilies, six yes. to 10 units, you know, so not big apartment complexes. Yeah. And, you know, at our peak, we're about 40 tenants. Wow. Uh, That's a lot. And we're, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know where we are today, 33, 35, something like that. Nice. Nice, Gary. Uh, that is so cool. And, you know, we're getting close to retirement age. And, uh, but I said, you know, like I said, we're still working it. Um, you look good, too, brother. I want you showing up, man, coming over here. I really appreciate you for coming, too. Thank you so much. Oh, it's great to be here, Chris. It's fun to share. So let's get you out of here. I know you had a busy day. What are you going to recommend for our viewers that are, obviously, everybody wants to wholesale, or our people that are already flipping? we got active, passive, land, um, wholesaling, renovating, landloading. Is lease options going to be over here on landloading, too? I think it's going to be closer to landlord, yeah. Got lease options over here. So the two different legs of income. I always like to stress to my viewers. I have multiple guys. I have, I'm, when you see my videos, I'm not just out here flipping houses. That's, that's, that's 
one leg to my income, you know. Please remember that. I'm not just a house flipper. I've got several income streams, but landlording is one of my favorites. Which one is your favorite, by the way, Gary? Well, clearly landlording, you know, that... Uh, but and I was flipping houses and making some good money doing that because yeah. you know I still had kids at home I still had uh, you know bills to pay obviously yeah. and I still have bills to pay but my my girls have grown up and I've paid for college already for them oh wow you know that's a big st so you're reaching some of those big steps and yeah. big milestones mm -hmm. um, that uh, I you know so now I'm a full time landlord um, and you know that's where I'm going to be and we'll stay there yeah. And I think it's going to be a great retirement income. I mean, I might get more and more passive. I might start hiring more stuff to get done. Yeah, I was like, we'll, we'll, we'll do another video for that. How yeah, you gonna... the exit plan. Yeah, I was reading the other day how you're going to dispose. Everything has to be disposed of, whether it's disposed within your family or without of it. You, know, you got it. Something's going to happen. You can't take it with you. <laughs> so you... <laughs> you don't want to take any tenants with me. No. <laughs> I'm sure they'd be right there. <laughs> Gary, no, don't come go. Fix, come fix my television. <laughs> I'm sure they would. So our viewers, what give us some? What do you recommend? Just your opinion, hindsight. Get your business license. Obviously, you're going to recommend that if you're flipping, if you're on this active side, wholesale. Well, I say Google this ruling of the tax commissioner. There's a lot there of good you information. Go. Okay. You know, ruling 9913, ruling of the tax commissioner, state of Virginia. Okay. Uh, Google that. Read that. A lot of other good information in there uh, to help you. But you need to read like a lawyer. Which oh be, lord. Uh, it's a little complicated, but not too bad. Um, but you know, I stick with it. That's that's the hard real part. estate in general. Yeah, real estate in general. Yeah. And you know, I remember when I bought my first. Uh, I started flip. I started um, uh, going to foreclosures on the courthouse steps. Okay. And I went. I dry traded. You know, I just I did dry all my trade. research. What's that? Well, I, I did all my research and pretended I was going to go. <laughs> I pretended I was going to buy. And so I had my price. You know. And then I went and watched the auction. That's cool. At least you were there. I was there, and I saw what the old guys, what you know, what the professionals were paying, mm -hmm. and I compared that to my notes. And I realized they weren't, you know, that it was competitive. They weren't giving away prices. So I, you know, and I, and I sharpened up my pencil. Okay. You know, of it's not like you're going to go down there and get a ten thousand dollar house you can sell for two hundred thousand. Heck no. You know, it, it, even if the even if the mortgage owed was ten thousand, it's going to bid up to a hundred. More. Yeah, 120 around here. Yeah, and it's gotten even more and more competitive. Yeah. Um, but you know, so that's. But then I got my first round. I actually plucked up my courage and actually bid. And I had my deposit and I won. It yeah. feels. How, tell me how that felt. Oh, it was scary. It after was, you won. After I won. Okay. You know, but I, I, you know, I plucked up my courage and raised yeah. my hand and <laughs> bid. And the funny thing is, is that that day there was like a great deal on. There was, there was like another house. It was like a fabulous deal. Not the one you bid on. Not the one I bid on. And so uh, I bid on mine, and um, and it was a high bidder at sixty thousand dollars. Same oh, yeah. neighborhood where that okay. was over in Fordham. And uh, and then this other one came up, and the bidding was ferocious on that other one. Really. And it got bid up to where there was no you know, not a whole lot of profit left in it. And even the old guys in the office said, where they were shaking their heads, said. We should have bid on the one you got. So I, <laughs> so I felt good. You know, some of those guys buy two or three houses a day. And there's know? something here. And so they could have bid on mine too if they really wanted to. But then I went and knocked on the door. Of oh, the house I, the house I bought. You would just put down what five thousand. I put down five thousand. Wow. I, I knocked on that. I gotta have I gotta have the balance and uh, you know two, two weeks. weeks. You know, I knock on the door and uh, ask the woman that answered, "Are you the owner? or Are you a tenant?" And she says, I, I rent the house. Okay. And uh, I said, well, you, you know, do you want to stay? She said, yeah, I'd like to stay. Wow. And so she stayed for several years <clears throat> and uh, paid rent, you know. And Holy uh, cow, so you never even had to go inside, I really? I didn't have to go inside. I, I, I did go inside and make a few repairs to make her, yeah. you know, make her happy. It was an out-of-town owner that, had, you know, yeah. was keeping the rent payments and not making them, you know, making Happens. mortgage payments. Happy. But the story I was going to tell, it's like, you know, if I put down this money and I'm coming over there and I'm fixing a few things and I'm thinking, man, you know, and I've gotten a loan for that house, permanent financing for that house, my cash flow's not that great. It's a hundred bucks a month now, you know, oh, early yeah. days, you know, it's, it's yeah. not a whole lot of money. And I'm thinking to myself, man, the hours I'm putting in here, I can make more money 
if I worked part time at McDonald's. Oh my lord! Wow. You know, but you know, and that was 2003. Now, 15 years later, that house is almost paid for. Okay. You know, mm. and the cash flow uh, is five five thousand dollars a year. Gotcha. You know, and uh, it's Holy a solid cow. house that I can sell for profit. Um, wow, girl. And you know, so there's. I wouldn't really want to be a landlord of one or two. I mean, there's a point where you, where you scale up. Uh, yeah, it's rough. Uh, but you've got to get past it. You've got you to start with one or two. You to do get have to, to ten, start, yeah. You know, to get to six, eight, ten. How big you want to be, you know, that's up to up, up to your viewers. Up to the person, yeah. yeah. Up to the person. But you're right. I remember my first one was 100 bucks a month, Gary. I was like, man, I got 100 bucks. Then a year went by. I spent 5000 probably in repairing it <laughs> amongst the mortgage payment. Yeah, but that was years ago, you know. I don't know what is it. It's like now I, I tell people I meet all the time. I'm like, you're seeing me now. You don't know the back office guy that was spending. I I think I spent probably fifty to sixty thousand dollars in lost more. I mean mortgage payments that where I had vacancies. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's not all cash in the mailbox or in the, even in direct deposit. It's hard work. All right. Anything else you want to drop for our viewers? I yeah. think we're good, Chris. So much good stuff. I'm going to get you. You're going to come back for me, Gary? Yeah, we're going to cover some other yeah, stuff. Yeah, we'll talk some more. This is going to be great. All right. So listen, guys. Gary Bode, a good friend of mine, a real estate investor. I, I, he's come here to bless you with some knowledge. If you like the content, click the like below. And make sure you subscribe to our channel here. I should have set that up there. Subscribe to our channel. <clears throat> any other interviews or the topics you'd like for me to cover the reason we're covering this one today is because I keep getting so many emails about whether you need a business license or not and yes, both of, yes. <laughs> we have between us Gary I mean I started in 04 you let's say you I know you have more than 03 but I'll, I'll give you that we have 20 plus years experience what in 30 we have both been flagged by our municipalities for business license taxes and I'm going to recommend that you get a business license if you're flipping and wholesaling. All right, so now you've heard it from the expert or if Gary, I know he's an expert, I know he's an expert. Heard it from the experts. Get out there, make some money and perseverance. Gary, you said that, what could you tell our viewers that are, because I'm going to say nine out of ten of my clients, they get burned out over the first few months. They get, They think that they're going to go look at a few houses and get a deal. Yeah, the good deal is you got to work hard, you know, to get them. But, you know, if you get one killer deal a year, yeah, that's all I mean, people you know, are. and, um, but you're going to, you know, uh, you're going to have to work hard to find that deal. Most of the time it's very, very competitive. Yep. Uh, I've, it's another show. Yeah. But I, I, I've hit some home runs. Maybe we'll do a show, home run, home run show, hit home run hitters. Okay, guys, Chris Haskins, Real Estate Roundup. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Gary. All right.